It was dark on the last night of the project. We'd been in the river system for six weeks photographing the other mail that allowed us to get really close, and we're just sort of leaving. The shoot was over. And my assistant, Jed, spotted up in the hills with binoculars a little white speck, and we went over to the shores with the sailboat, and we started to shoot, but it was getting so dark that you could almost hardly see the bear. Grabbed one of these new cameras with high ISO capabilities and was amazed that we were getting really good results in near-dark conditions with high ISOs and just started shooting. So on the last night when we thought the shoot was all over, we got one of our more iconic images of the shoot. I sat with that bear for two hours. He was just sleeping under the tree, and I wanted the light to get right. And then I was sleeping just three feet away from him with my head against the tree and just sitting there waiting for light to come out. Finally, the light came out for a second. I grabbed a couple shots. The one across in the log was when I first discovered him. I sort of sat down by this log hoping, you know, that I could get even a glimpse of him because I could see him up in the forest. He just came down to the river and jumped on that log and just walked up the log and almost basically stepped over my head, just walked right over me almost as I was sort of trying to hide against that log, and I just didn't move. So he walked within, uh, you know, a foot of me, and that's when I knew that he completely accepted me and was going to tolerate my presence and I was going to be able to get my images. The one sitting under the trees was even more amazing that, you know, everyone has pictures of spirit bears on rivers, but nobody has pictures of spirit bears up in the forest. So I followed that male up through the forest, and we're walking through this clear-cut logged area, and it was very, it was almost eerie that he went and slept down next to this old-growth red cedar, sicka spruce, and a hemlock tree. And those trees were only allowed to be kept there because they're culturally modified. From a thousand years ago, the First Nations would strip bark off them to make canoes and baskets. It's interesting that he would choose those old growth trees to go lie down next to. There's a leopard seal there trying to attack them, and they would come rocking out of the water probably 30 kilometers an hour. And it was trying to find the fine balance of getting the shot and make sure I could stay out of their way. Because an 80 pound bird hitting me in the head uh, wouldn't hurt the bird, but it'd break my neck probably. So I was trying to get those shots with a wide angle. And we had a scary moment with leopard seal flew out of the ice and knocked me over once, flew out of the water, trying to chase a penguin, and it knocked me over. So, I mean, it's just it's, you're really in the uh, hot zone there. We didn't know if we were going to get a chance to even see it. We were fascinated. We knew the new science had come out that, that they were releasing these micro bubbles, which would uh, reduce the friction between the water's tension and their feathers, uh, which slows them down, creates friction resistance. And by releasing those bubbles, it lubricates their bodies, allowing them to almost double their speed. It was amazing when they would just turn on their, their bubbles. It was like fighter jets turning on, you know, flares. The leopard seal was feeding me these dead penguins, and when I wouldn't accept them, I was just trying to photograph. It started to flip them on top of my head, and that's when that was happening. It was pushing them right on top of my head, trying to make sure I was going to eat a penguin, even though I wasn't touching them. I just kept photographing, so I had these feet hanging in front of the dome and then uh, the leopard seal's face in the background. They weigh about 80 pounds, 40 kilos when they're born, and then within 18 days, they're weaned from their mother, and they weigh close to 400 pounds or 180 kilos. And that's at that moment that the mums just left it. So they get very lonely, very curious. They're not scared of anything. So I would just lie down on the beach or lie in the water, and they would come to me and try and curl up with me. So I'm actually trying to push away from it uh, so I can get a picture of it because it's crawling all over me because they just want to be comforted. Walruses are incredibly intelligent animals. They're highly social, and I was trying to show them as intimate communicative, intelligent, beautiful animals, but that comes at a risk. They found polar bears floating around dead with tusk wounds in them, so being a photographer in the water or at the water's edge, you have to be incredibly cautious. These animals are 2,000, 2,500 pounds and come over and hit you, and they hit each other all the time, which to them is just, you know, we'll leave a little mark, but for us it can be lethal. Trying to find that balance of getting these beautiful pictures to portray them in a beautiful light without getting hurt.